The last riser on stage right is notoriously rickety. Every bit of choreography, every step touch, must be executed with the utmost trepidation. In between claps, our hands swing back to reassure us that the rails are still present and providing a small measure of reassurance. None of us wants to be the one who falls. <laughs> I've spent almost nine hours a week and the last nine years of my life here. The right side of the back row is where I discovered my passion. It is no coincidence that it was in this particular place. Tall people genuinely stand towards the back of an ensemble, and sopranos traditionally stand on the right side. <coughs> I am 5'10", with a huge head of curls, and I have been a soprano my entire life. I was placed in the back row where no other singers would have to crane their necks to see around me and my rather discombobulated choreography nicely hidden. <laughs> I have been here so long, it feels like I was born to stand here and sing my heart out. However, the right side of the back row would mean absolutely nothing to me if I were standing there alone. For the past four years, I have trained extensively at Chicago High School of the Arts as a classical soloist, and I'm slowly becoming comfortable being on stage by myself. However, when I stand on stage in this choir, a hundred voices strong, being comfortable is not a question. Alone, I feel nervous and imperfect. United, our choir sounds glorious and strong. At the end of all those hours of practice, I walk on stage with everyone else, file, dance, or party, to my spot and turn to face the audience. <laughs> I feel a sense of pride and accomplishment that every performer does, but in the group there is something much greater. When all the notes become chords locked into place and all the movements are in sync, a sense of harmony blossoms. Every single person on stage feels connected, and that connection branches out to every person in the audience. An entire collection of people who may otherwise be divided by social, racial, and economic barriers become connected by music. From my spot, I can see every single face. I look left, and I can see my fellow singers' smiles and tears of joy. When I look into the audience and search for it, I may even see that singular expression that signifies an epiphany, a feeling that they haven't felt before. I may only see it on one face, but if I find it, I know that we did our job. Four rehearsals a week, and dozens of musical styles, numerous languages, and countless pieces over the years. All that effort makes me happy, but nothing makes me more joyful than seeing those faces and knowing I helped bring that bliss to someone else in the world. When I was eight or nine, I started to understand the concept of race. I realized that being biracial meant I didn't really have a niche. But as an eight-year-old in Hyde Park neighborhood choir, it became my safe place. When I walked through those doors twice a week into Allegra rehearsal, it didn't matter that I was biracial. All that mattered was that I wanted to make music. In seventh and eighth grade, my peers started bullying me about my body. In seventh grade, I, they told me I was too skinny, and in eighth grade, they told me I was too fat. <laughs> but when I walked through those doors into took Vashay rehearsal twice a week, no one cared what I looked like. All they cared was that I wanted to make something beautiful. My sophomore year, my peers continued to bully me, and this time it traveled to social media. I felt like I could do nothing to escape it. But like the previous five years in choir, when I walked through those doors into the cultural center, it didn't matter. And not only did it not matter, I was ready to fight back. Every single time I have walked into a rehearsal, or a concert with a racist, sexist, or just plain mean comment in my mind, and the weight of the world on my heart, I walked out ready to be the change I wanted to see. I am standing here right now as a feminist, as an ally, and as the strong woman I am today, because I had the amazing staff and members of this organization to pick me up every time I fell. I want to thank every last one of you for being in my life. I am graduating and I will have to leave this choir. 
but I will take its power and its magic with me, and I will do my best to recreate that feeling wherever I go. However ricky, rickety and unstable a stage I might find myself on, I will share the love I feel when united with 4,000 voices in music.